The Uyuni Salt Flats Tour is generally a three-day tour by 4x4 through the salt flats, desert, and rough terrain, including very basic overnight accommodations. In today's vlog, you'll see what it's really like, from the incredible scenery, to breaking down, to the ugly side of this exhausting adventure. Welcome to Uyuni, Bolivia, which is most well known for the Uyuni Salt Flats, which is exactly where we're going today. As you can see, Uyuni is basically a desert town full of desert stuff. It's dusty and much like the last place in Bolivia, in Sucre, I am constantly out of breath because we're at about, I believe it's like 12,000 feet. So it's not a lot of oxygen. That's how I feel. And I can feel it. And this guy can too. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we've left our bags and we've reduced all of our stuff um, to basically two backpacks and my camera stuff. There's nothing but four by fours everywhere and people and backpacks. So this is the train graveyard and as you can see most or all of the tourists stop here. As you can see everyone's like climbing on top of the trains like there's some really cool photo opportunities. Half an hour later we are back off again. like sand, but check it out. Let's go down here. It's legit salt. This is so crazy. Let me zoom out. Salt kernels. So, we've come to our second stop right here on the salt flats, which is actually an old hotel and they had to, if I understood the guide correctly, they had to shut it down because of the contamination from it. So now it's just a place to kind of come and have lunch, which is exactly what we're about to do. But this is also a place where you can see lots and lots of people doing those really cool like forest perspective kind of shots where you have something in the foreground that looks big and then the background looks little and it's like, it's cool, whatever. This is an island. Um, this all used to be underwater and it's a lake that's dried up. So now this is still technically an island, but it's filled with cactus that are massive and prickly as Ross just found out. <laughs> I had to touch it. I had to. Yeah. We got the whole mirror effect, like the sun is about to go down. Check it out guys, what? Wait, I'm so the sun's about to go down. Good morning and welcome to day two. Last night, it's a bit of a disaster, so I'm gonna tell you guys the story really quick. Basically, we got to the place that we're staying over, that we were staying overnight at last night. Um, I mean, we had a really nice private room, shared bathroom that's included in the tour price. We ended up finding out that the other car on our tour was going out to the salt flats at night to, to see the stars and do night photography, which I was really excited about. So we went and did that, um, except it's a full moon. So obviously <laughs> it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted, but that's okay, not a big deal. And then we got back and I thought I lost my phone because I couldn't find it 
anywhere. Our driver even took me back out into the salt flats to look for it. Tore apart the room, tore apart all my bags. Total disaster. And you know, I was like, oh, I lost all the photos that we took on that during the day. And yeah, so not a good thing at all. So basically I got like no sleep, which is why I'm wearing sunglasses. Also it's bright, but my eyes look fucked up. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna cover that with sunglasses today. Um, yeah, I got like no sleep, but in the end I woke up in the morning and they had slid like in the inside part of my bag and anyways so it's all good so I have the phone back now we are here on our our first stop of day two and it looks like we have a flat tire as well so our driver is fixing that right now while we have come up here to enjoy the view so yeah let's see what the day holds get to this really remote spot we're at right now. As you can see, there's like, well maybe you can't see, I don't know. Um, there's like snow-capped mountains and volcanoes in the background and then there's this beautiful lagoon here. The flamingos, and they're really cool and I got lots and lots of footage and photos of those. Well, tonight we are all, so everybody from our car is sleeping in the same room. And one thing to note that I wanted to point out is that during the day, it's about 20 degrees Celsius, so pretty warm, but at night it drops to zero degrees Celsius. So it's really cold. I've got lots and lots of layers with to bundle up with tonight because the blankets aren't very thick here and there aren't any outlets here either. So we'll have to save battery until tomorrow. All right, good morning, guys. Um, so we're probably the last group to leave. Everyone else left about five o'clock, 5.30. Um, and just to give a quick update, so last night we did have a generator running for about two hours where we had shared outlets to charge some of our stuff. Um, and it was absolutely freezing at night. So if you are gonna do this, make sure you have lots and lots of layers. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna head off on day three now and see what that brings us. There's no better way to start the morning than with the smell of sulfur. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> so here we are in a field of geysers. Here we have some hot springs as well, and um, you have to pay to use them, but that ticket also gets you access to the bathroom, which is good. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a little too cold and early for me. I mean, I know I did the polar plunge recently, but if it's not the polar regions, it just isn't worth it. <laughs> it's too cold and early. I want breakfast and coffee. Wah! <laughs> <laughs> this is frozen, as you can see. And then that's steaming. Pretty interesting. Ooh. Oh, I cracked it. Whoa. I was looking for something to break the ice. Just left lunch and I wasn't able to pick up the camera because I got too distracted by llamas, but it seems we are broken down now mm. and we are just sitting here. Let's see how this pans out. Our trip kind of ended very abruptly. Um, so basically what happened uh, about, honestly, like two minutes after the car was jumped by those guys and we um, kept going, um, we came across another body of water and one of the guys in our group just went off on the driver about not going that way, even though there was a car in there anyway, so I don't think we couldn't have gone that way. Um, 
so he just went off. And I don't speak very fluent Spanish, but I definitely know that he was swearing and he was just having a massive, massive rant at our driver. Uh, he could have stopped it much sooner than he did, but he just kind of kept going even after we turned around and we were already driving um, away, basically not to the destination we were supposed to go, the other stop on the tour for today, and we started heading back, back to a uni. Um, anyways, he just kept going. Yep. To the point where the driver actually stopped the car and got out. And to be honest, I kind of wanted to join him because it was just, it just ruined the atmosphere in the car. It, it just, and I understand, like, I, I do understand where he was coming from because he was traveling with his family and, you know, he was talking about their safety and being concerned for the kids' safety and his wife's and all of that. And I get that. I absolutely understand that. But then maybe don't go on a three-day, four-by-four tour through the desert, you know? Like, maybe that's not where you should be going if that's how you feel. And I, 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 I understand. I understand wanting to feel safe. I do. But personally, having been stranded in the desert on my own with a broken down car, I never once felt unsafe in this situation. As you guys saw in the video, there are tons of other people doing the exact same route. So you're always, there's always other cars around. So I never once thought, oh my gosh, if we break down, like that's it. Not once did that cross my mind. So, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's really hard and I don't really know how I feel about it right now, but I did want to just end it there because I didn't really want to have to pick this up again and kind of talk about it again. So. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's how this ended. One thing that I do want to add that really gets under my skin is I don't, I, I feel like people often take things out on people they see of a lesser statue than them. You know, whether it be a driver, a cleaner, a server, anything like that. And I, I don't like that at all. It really drives me crazy because you have absolutely no idea what that person is going through. So don't take anything out on them. And you're not any better than them. <sighs> Anyways, whatever, that's, that's my whole take on it. So I think I'm gonna end my rant there and kind of just, yeah, move on from this. What are we doing right now? I don't know. We're sitting on top of a Jeep. Driving through the salt flats. I don't know why we do these things. Because it's amazing, Ross. 